What is going on YouTube? Just helping you out here. And for today's video, I'll be doing chapter 14, problem 64, in the Fundamentals of Physics 10th edition textbook by Jura Walker, Halliday, and Resnick. Chapter 14 is all about fluids, and in problem 64, we have a horizontal pipe, there's water flowing through it, and we're asked to find the volume of water that flows out in a specified time period, and we're asked the speed and gauge pressure in one of the sections of the pipe. And so the first thing that I want to do is draw a simplified version of the figure that we're given for the problem. And so I'll just show a pipe here with a little contraction. I apologize if my drawing is not very good. I'll draw it just like that. It might be a little exaggerated compared to what it is in the problem, but I, I mean the same thing. And so we'll call this right here. That'll be our point two. And point one will be just inside tube. So we'll call that point one. And so for part A, we want to find the volume of water that flows out in a 10 minute period. And so volume rate, which I'll say is RV, is equal to the volume per time, which is equal to the cross-sectional area of the pipe times our velocity. And so since we're looking for volume, we can multiply both sides by T and that'll leave us with volume is equal to area times velocity times time. And now since I said that area is cross-sectional area and we have a pipe, that means that our cross-sectional area is a circle and the area of a circle is pi times the radius squared. And so we'll plug that in and we'll say volume is equal to pi times the radius squared times volume times time. And we aren't given the radius in the problem, but we're told the diameter, but we also know that radius is equal to diameter over two. And so we can plug this in for radius, and that'll give us volume is equal to pi times diameter over two, entire quantity squared, times velocity, times time. And now if we multiply that out, that'll be pi times diameter squared, times velocity, times time, all of that divided by four. And now you may be asking, okay, we have diameter and we have velocity, but we have two points here with a different diameter and velocity at each point. But water flows out at point one, and so this will be diameter one and velocity one. And both of those values we are given in the problem, so we have everything we need to plug in. So volume is equal to pi times diameter one, which we're told is three centimeters, that is squared, times velocity one, which is 15 meters per second, and our time, which is 10 minutes. And all of that is divided by four. Now the problem we have here is we have centimeters and meters and seconds and minutes. And so we need to do some unit conversions, so we have one length scale and one time scale. And I'm just going to use standard units for length, so we'll have meters, and over here I will convert the minutes into seconds. So what we'll do is we know that 100 centimeters are in one meter, and in order for these units to work out, we have centimeters squared here, so in order to get centimeters squared here, we need to square this term, and we need to convert minutes to seconds, and in one minute, we have 60 seconds. And now if you plug all of that into your calculator, you will find that the volume of water that flows out in 10 minutes is equal to 6.36 meters cubed. And that is your final answer for part A. And so now for part B, we wanna know what the velocity of our water is at point two. And so by the continuity equation, we know that the mass flow rate in section two has to equal the mass flow rate in section one. And so we can write that out. The rate of mass flow in section one is equal to the rate of mass flow in section two. And we can expand these by saying the density in section one times the area of section one times the velocity in one is equal to the density in two times the area in two times the velocity in two. And one simplification we can make from the start is 
The fluid we are working with is water, which in most situations, including this one, we can assume to be incompressible, which means that no matter how much pressure you put on it, the density will not change. And so what we can do is we can say that our first density in this section is equal to the density in section two. So essentially, when our water flows through this contraction, we can assume that its density does not change. And just to make things a little easier without any confusion with subscripts, I'm just gonna say from now on that we have density, not necessarily density one and two, because from now on we will just assume that one equals two, so we can just drop the subscripts and leave it as row and that's it. Okay, so over here, since these two are equal, we can cancel them out on both sides and we'll be left with area one times velocity one is equal to area two times velocity two. And now we're looking for velocity two, so we can divide both sides by area two, and that'll give us velocity two is equal to area one over area two times velocity one. And again, we are working with a pipe, so area is equal to pi r squared, which is equal to pi times d over two, squared, which is equal to pi d squared over four. And so now we can plug this in for a1 and a2. The only difference is a1 will have diameter one and a2 will have diameter two. And so then we have v2 is equal to pi d1 squared over four divided by pi d2 squared over four, that entire quantity times v1. And now since we have a pi over four in the numerator and a pi over four in the denominator, those will cancel out. And this will be d1 over d2 squared times v1. And we are given all three of these quantities in the problem so we can plug them in and solve for v2. So v2 is equal to diameter one, which is three centimeters over diameter two, which is five centimeters, that entire quantity squared, times our first velocity, which is 15 meters per second. And now since we have centimeters and centimeters in the numerator and denominator, we do not need to do any unit conversions to meters. They will already cancel out for us. And if you plug this into your calculator, you will find that V2 is equal to 5.4 meters per second. And that's your final answer for part B. And just as a little bit of a sanity check, we can see that V2 was much smaller than V1. But if we look back at our drawing, since point one is in a more constricted area, your water will have to flow more quickly in order to be the same mass flow rate as this section here. So using that logic, we know that the velocity in the bigger section should be slower than the velocity in section one, which happens to be the case, so everything makes sense. And now I'm out of space on this page, so I'm gonna get another piece of paper so we can complete part C. And now for part C, we are asked to find the gauge pressure in section two of the pipe, and the way that we can do that is by doing a Bernoulli balance between points two and point one, and so that'll be pressure one plus one half rho V1 squared plus rho g y1 is equal to pressure two plus one half rho v2 squared plus rho g y2. Again, these would normally have subscripts one and two on them, but since we already assumed that they are equal, I'm just dropping the subscripts. And this may look like kind of a lot, but we can actually simplify it straight from the beginning. If we look at the third term on both sides, our densities we said are equal, gravity is a universal constant, so those are equal on both sides. And so we only need to look at the height difference between our two points. And now if we look at our drawing, we see that points one and point two are on the same horizontal, meaning that y1 equals y2. So this entire term is equal to this entire term, meaning that we can cross those out on both sides. So this goes and this goes, meaning that'll leave us with pressure one plus one half rho v1 squared is equal to pressure two plus one half rho v2 squared. And so now we're looking for the gauge pressure. And so what that means is the difference in the pressure in section two to atmospheric pressure. 
but if we look at our drawing again, point one is exposed to the atmosphere because this end of the tube is open, and so this is flowing out into the atmosphere as we are told in the problem, meaning that the pressure at point one is equal to atmospheric pressure. So what we are actually looking for in the problem is pressure two minus pressure one. And as I just said, that is because pressure one is equal to the atmospheric pressure. So here we have P2 minus P atmosphere, essentially. And then the way that we get that from looking at this equation is we can subtract P1 from both sides, and we can subtract this term from both sides. So we have this part of the equation, and that's going to leave us with 1 half rho V1 squared minus 1 half rho V2 squared. And just to simplify this a little bit, we can factor out a 1 half rho, and so that's going to leave us with P2 minus P1 is equal to 1 half rho times V1 squared minus V2 squared. We aren't given the density in the problem, but we're told that the fluid is water, so that's a value that we can look up. V1 we're given in the problem, but we aren't given V2 in the problem, but we actually just solved for V2 in part B. So we have all the values we need to find the gauge pressure at point 2 in the pipe, and so we can plug those in. That'll be P2 minus P1 is equal to 1 half times 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed times our V1 squared, which is 15 meters per second squared, minus V2, which we just found to be 5.4 meters per second. That quantity is also squared. And if you plug that into your calculator, you will find that our gauge pressure is equal to 9.79 times 10 to the fourth kilograms per meter times second squared. And a more common way to write this would be 9.79 times 10 to the fourth newtons per meter squared. These two units are equivalent. And that'll be your final answer for part C. And so that's about it for this problem. If you found this video helpful, please drop a like. Leave a comment if you have any questions or an idea for a future video. And lastly, please don't forget to subscribe and tell your friends about my channel so I can grow and help more of you guys out. I'm just helping you out. See you in the next video.